Good morning to you on this beautiful spring morning. The Order of Matins, Lutheran Service Book, page 219. Please stand. The responses for the Easter season will be used. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh, come, let us worship Him. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alle alleluia. O oh, come, let us worship him. Psalm 119, verses Your testimonies are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. The unfolding of your words gives light. It imparts understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as is your way with those who love your name. Keep steady my steps according to your promise, and let no iniquity get dominion over me. Redeem me from man's oppression, that I may keep your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears, because people do not keep your law. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated for the office hymn, 466. Christ has arisen, alleluia. Rejoice and praise him, alleluia. For our redeemed, burst from the tomb, even from death, dispelling its gloom. Let us sing praise to him with endless joy. Death's fearful sting he has come to destroy. Our sin forgiving, alleluia. Jesus is living, alleluia. For three long days the grave did its worst, until its strength by God was dispersed. He who gives life did death undergo, and in its conquest his might did show. Let us sing praise to him with endless joy. Death's fearful sting he has come to destroy. Our sin forgiving, alleluia. Jesus is living, alleluia. The angel said to them, do not fear. You look for Jesus who is not here. See for yourselves, the tomb is all bare. Only the grave cloths are lying there. Let us sing praise to him with endless joy. Death's fearful sting he has come to destroy. Our sin forgiving, alleluia. Jesus is living, alleluia. Go spread the news, he's not in the grave. He has arisen this world to save. Jesus redeeming labors are done. Even the battle with sin is won. Let us sing praise to him with endless joy. Death's fearful sting he has come to destroy. Our sin forgiving, alleluia. Jesus is living, alleluia. Christ has arisen, he sets us free. Alleluia, to him praises be. Jesus is living, let us all sing. He reigns triumphant, heavenly King. Let us sing praise to him with endless joy. Death's fearful sting he has come to destroy. Our sin forgiving, alleluia. Jesus is living, alleluia. A reading from Leviticus chapter 9. On the eighth day, Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. And he said to Aaron, Take for yourself a bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering 
both without blemish, and offer them before the Lord. And say to the people of Israel, Take a male goat for a sin offering, and a calf and a lamb, both a year old without blemish, for a burnt offering, and an ox and a ram for peace offerings, to sacrifice before the Lord, and a grain offering mixed with oil, for today the Lord will appear to you. And they brought what Moses commanded in front of the tent of meeting. And all the congregation drew near and stood before the Lord. And Moses said, This is the thing that the Lord commanded you to do, that the glory of the Lord may appear to you. Then Moses said to Aaron, Draw near to the altar and offer your sin offering and your burnt offering and make atonement for yourself and for the people. And bring the offering of the people and make atonement for them as the Lord has commanded. So Aaron drew near to the altar and killed the calf of the sin offering which was for himself. And the sons of Aaron presented the blood to him and he dipped his finger in the blood and put it on the horns of the altar and poured out the blood at the base of the altar. But the fat and the kidneys and the long lobe of the liver from the sin offering he burned on the altar as the Lord commanded Moses. The flesh and the skin he burned up with fire outside the camp. Then he killed the burnt offering and Aaron's sons handed him the blood and he threw it against the sides of the altar. And they handed the burnt offering to him, piece by piece, the head, and he burned them on the altar. And he washed the entrails and the legs and burned them with the burnt offering on the altar. Then he presented the people's offerings and took the goat of the sin offering that was for the people and killed it and offered it as a sin offering like the first one. And he presented the burnt offering and offered it according to the rule. And he presented the grain offering, took a handful of it, and burned it on the altar beside the burnt offering of the morning. Then he killed the ox and the ram, the sacrifice of peace offerings for the people. And Aaron's sons handed him the blood, and he threw it against the sides of the altar. But the fat pieces of the ox and the ram, the fat tail, and that which covers the entrails and the kidneys and the long lobe of the liver, they put that fat piece on the breasts, and he burned the fat pieces on the altar. But the breasts and the right thigh Aaron waved for a wave offering before the Lord, as Moses commanded. Then Aaron lifted up his hands toward the people and blessed them. And he came down from offering the sin offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings. And Moses and Aaron went into the tent of meeting. And when they came out, they blessed the people, and the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. And fire came out from before the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the pieces of fat on the altar. And when all the people saw it, they shouted and fell on their faces. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord all glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that sleep. Give to the Lord all glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Give to the Lord all glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia.
This morning for our catechetical instruction, we continue our reading from the Book of Concord, specifically the Formula of Concord, Article 2, picking, off at, picking up at paragraph 74, speaking now of negative statements. Again, this is Article 2 on free will from the Formula of Concord's Solid Declaration. Negative statements. First, the folly of the Stoics and the Manichaeans, who asserted that everything that happens must happen in this way, that a person does everything from coercion, and even in outward works a person's will has no freedom or ability to perform, to a certain extent, outward righteousness and respectable behavior. A person cannot avoid outward sins and vices. A person's will is coerced to do outward wicked deeds, unchastity, robbery, murder, and such. Two, second, the error of the gross Pelagians that the free will, from its own natural powers, without the Holy Spirit, can turn to God and believe the gospel. People can be obedient to God's law from the heart, and by this voluntary obedience the heart can merit the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Three, the error of the papists and the scholastics who have acted in a somewhat more crafty way. They have taught that a person from his own natural powers can begin to do good and to convert himself. Then, because a person is too weak to bring it to completion, the Holy Spirit comes to the aid of the good begun from a person's own natural powers. Fourth, the teaching of the synergists who pretend that a person is not absolutely dead to good and spiritual things, but is badly wounded and half dead. The free will is too weak to make a beginning and to convert itself by God to God by its own powers. It can't be obedient to God's law from the heart. Nevertheless, when the Holy Spirit makes a beginning, calls us through the gospel, and offers his grace, the forgiveness of sins, and eternal salvation, then the free will, from its own natural powers, can meet God. To a certain extent, although feebly, the will can do something toward salvation. It can help and cooperate in it, and can qualify itself for it. The will can apply itself to grace, can grasp and accept it, and can believe the gospel. It can also cooperate by its own powers with the Holy Spirit in the continuation and maintenance of this work. Against this teaching, it has been shown at length above that the power, to, the power known to qualify one's self for grace naturally does not come from our own natural powers, but only from the Holy Spirit's work. Likewise, we reject the following teachings of the popes and the monks. After regeneration, a person can completely fulfill God's law in this life, and through this fulfillment of the law, he is righteous before God and merits eternal life. Six, on the other hand, the enthusiasts should be rebuked with great seriousness and zeal. They should not be tolerated in any way in God's church. They imagine that God, without any means, without the hearing of the divine word, and without the use of the holy sacraments, draws people to himself, enlightens, justifies, and saves them. 7. We should also rebuke those who imagine that in conversion and regeneration, God creates a new heart and new person, and such a way that the substance and essence of the old Adam, and especially the rational soul, are completely destroyed, and a new essence of the soul is created out of nothing. St. Augustine clearly rebuke, rebukes this error in his comments on Psalm 25, where he, quotes, where he quotes the passage from Paul in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22, quote, put off your old self, end quote. Augustine explains this in the following words, quote, lest anyone might think that the substance or essence of a person is to be laid aside, he himself explains what it is to lay aside the old man and to put on the new, when he says in the following words, putting away lying, speak the truth. Behold, that is to put off the old man and to put on the new. End quote. Number eight. Likewise, 
The following expressions should not be used without being explained. The human will before, in, and after conversion resists the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is given to those who resist him. The preceding explanation makes this matter clear, where a no change at all in the intellect, will, and heart happens through the Holy Spirit to what is good, and b a person does not at all believe the promise and is not made fit by God for grace, but entirely resists the word. There no conversion takes place or can exist. For conversion is the kind of change through the Holy Spirit's work in a person's intellect, will, and heart, that by the Holy Spirit's work a person can receive offered grace. Indeed, all those who stubbornly and persistently resist the Holy Spirit's work and movements, which take place through the Word, do not receive, but grieve and lose the Holy Spirit. Thus far, the reading from the Book of Concord, Formula of Concord, Solid Declaration, Article 2 on Free Will. I now invite you to stand as we sing the canticle, the Te Deum. We praise you, O God, we acknowledge you to be the Lord. All the earth now worships you, the Father, everlasting. To you all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To you cherubim and seraphim continually do cry. Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of your glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise you. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise you. The noble of our martyrs praise you. The holy church throughout all the world does acknowledge you. The Father of an infinite majesty, your adorable, true, and only Son, also the Holy the Comforter. You are the King of glory, O Christ. You are the everlasting Son, the Father, when you took it upon yourself to deliver man, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. When you had overcome the sharpness of death, you opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to be our judge. We therefore pray you to help your servants whom you have redeemed with your precious blood. Make them to be numbered with your saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save your people and bless your heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify you and we worship your name for ever and ever. Grant, O oh Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. 
O Lord, let your mercy be upon us, as our trust is in you. O Lord, in you have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, everlasting Father, bless the people of this parish and your people throughout the world. Uphold them as they go about in this new work week, their various vocations, strengthening them by your Spirit that they may be the salt and the light amongst our community amongst the families to which you have sent them. Heavenly Father, bless us with wise and discerning leaders, good governors that are eager to do your will, that seek to sow the seeds of unity among us. Stop those who by their actions and words sow the seeds of hatred and discord among us. May our communities be places of peace where life is valued, Especially we ask you to protect those who cannot speak for themselves, the unborn and the infirm. Heavenly Father, as our state continues to deliberate death and continues to deliberate laws such as assisted suicide, again, awaken your people that they might find their voice, that they may raise their voices for life. Heavenly Father, be with the men and women who are working at this moment to protect the freedoms that we enjoy. Uphold them in their vocations, keep them safe, and allow them at the end of their duties to return safely to those whom they love. And bless us as citizens that we may use these freedoms to serve you and bring glory to your holy name. Heavenly Father, be with all who are crying out to you for healing. Place your hand upon them according to your good and gracious will. Bless those who travel, guide their steps. Heavenly Father, be with those who mourn and comfort them with the empty tomb of our Good Shepherd, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that they may look forward to a joyful reunion before your throne with all those who have gone before us in the faith. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Ah. Uh-huh.